In today's video, I'm gonna show you the four things you absolutely must make sure you do if you've just switched from main stage to Ableton. Brett Pontecorvo here at LiveKeyboardist.com where I help keyboard players just like you with the ins and outs of sound design, with building a stable live keyboard rig, and with mastering Ableton. If you are new here, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. All right, so if you have just switched over from main stage to Ableton, here are the four things that you absolutely must do to make sure this transition goes as seamlessly as possible. So first of all, you must take inventory of the sounds you are using in main stage. And the reason for that is some of them are actually able to be opened inside Ableton Live. So if you're going through your presets and you notice that any of your instruments are EXS instruments, they can be opened up in Ableton's sampler. So if you have the sweet version of Ableton, you can open those files inside Ableton Live. And if you're still on the fence about what version of Ableton to buy, I've got a card up on the top to help you make that choice. The second thing that you definitely need to do if you've just switched over to Ableton is have a really long think about what your goals are for using Ableton Live, because Ableton has a lot less opinions about the way your live performance set can be structured. So in main stage, everything is song by song, patch by patch, but in Ableton, you can create a song by song, patch by patch setup, or you can have something that is a little bit more fluid that sort of has on-off switches where you're really able to control all of your sounds individually, or uh, you can also have things that are set up to change your patches to a timeline. Um, and I've also got a link above if you are interested in seeing the most common types of Ableton live patch list. But once you really have a good idea about what your goals are with Ableton, will you be running keys? Will you be running tracks? Will you be running both at the same time? It's a lot easier to find the information you need and to build a setup that works for you. The third thing that you definitely need to make sure you do is set up your Ableton MIDI preferences correctly. So if you want to have your keyboard working inside Ableton Live, you'll definitely need to make sure that track is turned on. And if your keyboard's a controller like mine, then you'll also need remote turned on as well. And you'll need to do the same for any hardware controllers that you're using to alter your parameters. In addition to that, it's also a really good idea to set your takeover mode to the appropriate liking that you have because you don't get the same visual feedback in Ableton that you would get in main stage. So if you move a knob that you sort of forgot and it just starts jumping to a specific value, that can be really jarring, especially during live performance. But why don't you go ahead, let me know in the comments below if main stage has ever crashed on you in the middle of a live performance. I know it definitely has on me. And if you need a little bit of help getting your transition from main stage to Ableton going, then I've actually got a full course that's going to help you to do that. You can check that out at the link above. All right. My last tip for those who have just switched over to Ableton is to avoid the arm and unarm button in exchange for instrument racks. Instrument racks can be really good, not only because it gives you a little bit of control on the instruments that are inside of them, but because it allows you to filter out your note on messages, meaning that your songs will get that sort of natural fadeaway that you want as opposed to just sort of clicking off with no tail at all. If you got value out of this video, please make sure you click that like and subscribe button. And if you need a little bit more information about how to really switch from main stage to Ableton well, make sure you check out the course. I've got the videos on the screen that I mentioned earlier, and I will see you next time on LiveKeyboardist.com.